structure of the webinar um, will be the following. Both our speakers will give their presentations for about 15 minutes each, then the Q&A session for about 10 minutes. So we will aim to wrap up our webinar around 11.45, 11.50 um, Edmonton time. Uh, please don't hesitate to leave your questions via Zoom uh, Q&A window. Uh, perhaps we wouldn't be able to answer uh, all your questions and therefore I would encourage you to contact our speakers uh, directly if you will need any additional clarifications. Uh, the aim of this webinar uh, is not only to give some a snapshot on opportunities uh, available for collaboration with France and uh, Wallonia Brussels region, but also put you in touch with uh, those um, um, diplomats who are in charge of uh, science and research uh, and uh, those who are, uh, would be happy to support your current or some potential uh, activities in the near future. Um, I need to mention that uh, this webinar will be recorded and uh, will be shared uh, later with uh, all uh, webinar participants. It will be available also at the website at the YouTube uh, channel of uh, the University of Alberta International. So uh, before starting, uh, I uh, would like also to uh, say the following. The University of Alberta uh, acknowledges that uh, we are located uh, on Treaty 6 territory and respects uh, the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our, our vibrant community. And I know that we have today participants not only from Edmonton, not only from the University of Alberta, but uh, people from other parts of Canada. So uh, wherever you are in Canada at the moment, please reflect on this. And uh, I will finish this introduction here and uh, turn it to Xavier. Xavier, please. All right, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, uh, bonjour à tous, uh, bonjour à toutes. Um, my name is Xavier Gromet from the French Embassy in Ottawa. I'm going to share my screen with you now. So as, uh, as Alex mentioned, I'm the science and higher education attaché at the French Embassy in Ottawa. And I'd be uh, very pleased to uh, present some opportunities to do research uh, with uh, French institutions uh, in France. Uh, first, I would like to thank the University of Alberta for organizing uh, this uh, webinar. And uh, I'm very happy to be here and I'd be happy to address some any of questions you can have uh, at the session and even later on. So, uh, I will start by a brief remark about um, the scientific service of the French Embassy. Um, we are um, located here in Ottawa, but uh, we have also an office in Vancouver. I will talk about that at the end. And our missions is, mo I mean, three principal missions, I would say. First, to monitor the advances in science and technology in Canada, but uh, more importantly, to establish and strengthen partnerships in science and technology between Canada and France and promote the exchange of students, researchers and young entrepreneurs between our two countries. And for that, we have both uh, tools which are developed both here at the embassy, but also uh, in different institutions in France and in Europe. Uh, I will give you some examples of the way we can strengthen partnerships in science and technology. For instance, we organize and we support exploratory missions. Uh, uh, one example of uh, this type of mission, which is on oceanography, was supposed to take place in June 2020 in the Atlantic regions. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, this did not take place. And it's postponed, hopefully, for spring 2021. And for that, we highlight a specific uh, strategic subject between France and Canada, which are, for example, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, quantum sciences, uh, climate change, uh, oceanography, and so on. We also support and organize bilateral workshops and symposia to promote French expertise. And I will give you a couple of examples. One of them is a uh, um, symposium we organized with the Royal Society of Canada and the University of Ottawa last year in September in, at the University of Ottawa. Uh, and that was part of the G7 reflections of the um, science, science academies of the G7 countries on science, trust, and democracy in the digital age. So for that, we invited some uh, 
French participants to take place in the discussions which was uh, taking place here. Another one a bit closer to home for you, which are in uh, Edmonton. A couple of years ago, there was uh, this uh, French Amer American climate talk about the ocean where Serge Segura, which is the ambassador to the ocean of France, uh, came to Edmonton to give a talk about uh, uh, oceanic research and the importance of oceanic research and diplomacy. And for that, uh, the French embassy can uh, support uh, this type of symposium, which, whether they are organized by, uh, by us or by you. So if you want to organize a symposium, uh, at the university, you can reach out to our office. And if you want to invite French participants, we can financially support your, uh, your uh, project. Um, to promote further exchange of students, researchers and entrepreneurs, we have some partnerships with, uh, for, for instance, MyTax. Uh, so for MyTax, we have a partnership uh, to support 15 uh, outbound and inbound student uh, mobility, uh, where, whether they are for GRA or GRI programs. Uh, we also have uh, an in-house uh, science mobility program, which is called Moore's Cycland Program. So this program, which is, uh, was launched a couple of years ago, uh, in the name of Gérard Mourou and Donna Strickland, which uh, uh, both were awarded with the Nobel Prize in 2018 in physics, uh, we, uh, we provide uh, to, some, to researchers that we select among the Canadian or French applicants, uh, we select some laureates who uh, will receive a plane ticket and a few uh, per diems so that they could travel to France if they come from Canada and vice versa if they come to, from France. And for instance, in 2019, three researchers from France were at the University of Alberta. Uh, this uh, takes place every year. There is a call. So unfortunately, this year, most of the laureates could not travel. Hopefully, they will travel in 2021. So the 2021 call might be a little bit uh, smaller since uh, we have to postpone the, mo the mobility of this year's uh, laureates. Um, then I will pre present some more tools which exist to foster the French-Canadian scientific cooperation. Uh, first, uh, from specific uh, French uh, research institutions, and then uh, I will briefly talk about European funding. And finally, I will talk a bit further from about the French Canada, the France Canada Research Fund. So, as you may know, beyond universities in France, we have some research institutions. Uh, for example, CNRS, which has a broad spectrum, a spectrum of research in all types of subjects. INRAE, which is about uh, uh, agriculture and environment. INRIA, math and uh, computer sciences, I would say. INSERM, about health. IFREMER, about the ocean. And CEA, which is about uh, nuclear energy and alternative energies. Uh, we'll talk primarily about CNRS, but uh, let me assure you that uh, the other institutions also have this type of programs too. Why CNRS? Because it's the largest publicly funded research institution in the European Union. It has 32,000 people, uh, among them about 11,000 uh, researchers, and it has an annual budget of 3.3 billion uh, euros. This uh, CNRS has uh, about a thousand research units, which are uh, laboratories, and um, 97 of those research units are uh, partly operated with uh, academic partners, whether they are universities or other research institutions, and they are spread in the entire country, also overseas and in some uh, of foreign countries. And there are, for instance, four of these units which are based here in Canada. Uh, some of these units are also um, jointly operated with uh, private companies. Uh, for, to develop this kind of project, the CNRS has different types of tools. Uh, they have uh, what we have here, the International Emerging Actions, which are the very first uh, initiation program that you can have with the CNRS lab, and then different type of, uh, of uh, structures which are growing in size. And at the end, you have the international research laboratories, which actually are real labs with two walls. And there are four of these labs which are here in Canada, as I said, and one of them, for instance, in Quebec, Takuvik, which is about uh, Arctic research, uh, is one of the flagship of the cooperation of uh, France and, and Canada. Uh, most of these institu uh, most, most of these actions take place primarily when you already have 
uh, a team in CNRS that you are working with. And this uh, team thinks that the cooperation that you can build can grow and they will take action on that. They, they will propose to CNRS to build this uh, type of uh, uh, cooperation partnership and they, they will contact your university to build trust and share some of the resources, for instance. For this, uh, your contact will be Jan Matas. Uh, I hope you can see his name here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, Jan is the is the is the responsible for the CNRS office in Canada. And uh, so, if you have any questions, please refer to Jan. Uh, he's based here in Ottawa, so you can contact him easily. Uh, I will talk briefly about the European funding, H2020 uh, funding scheme. So Horizon 2020 uh, is the current uh, European funding scheme. Um, Adria will talk a bit further about that in his presentation later on. So I would just want to let you know that these uh, Horizon 2020 European funding schemes are um, multilateral collaborative research funding uh, schemes. Uh, they have to involve several partners from several countries and some uh, associated countries can take part in these projects and Canada is one of these associated country. Um, and uh, until recently, uh, the Canadian teams could be part of these programs without receiving fundings uh, from anywhere. And uh, recently, uh, there is, uh, since this year, in fact, there is funding uh, for Canadian teams which are part of these projects for the New Frontiers in Research Fund. Uh, for that, uh, there is uh, uh, there are fundings which are located and uh, it's organized by the three council, uh, I mean the three um, agencies of uh, funding agencies here in Canada. Uh, the the Canadian teams can receive a maximum of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars per year for up to four years, and uh, ten million dollars were allocated in the budget for this type of program. So. You, if you have more, if you want more information about how could you could join this uh, type of programs, first you have to be involved in a consortium. But then, if you want to receive funding, you better contact uh, uh, the website. I mean, the, the address which is down here. Uh, what's important to really uh, remember is that uh, now that, uh, as before, you could be part of these type of programs, but now you can really receive funding from the Canadian side. Um, now I want to talk a bit more about the France Canada Research Fund. So um, the, the France Canada Research Fund is a seeding funding uh, program uh, which has the goal to promote new uh, cooperation between uh, France and Can French and Canadian uh, um, researchers. Um, it started 20 years ago, so this year is the 20th anniversary. And uh, the goal is really to promote new uh, collaborative uh, partnerships. Um, there is a consortium of 20 Canadian universities, which are part of this consortium here in Canada. And you can see here that the University of Alberta is part of this consortium, so from the beginning. And uh, it has some private partners who was, were taking part in the funding in the beginning. And on the French side, uh, the, since the funding is coming from uh, two ministries, any university, any researcher, any laboratory in France, whether they are the university or one of the institutions I was talking about in the beginning, uh, they can take part in this, uh, in this French Canadian research fund, which means that you can have a collaboration with a French scientist and uh, they, they will be able to uh, start a project uh, with you. So in brief, what is it? Um, so this uh, French Canadian research fund is, um, organized uh, since uh, 20 years now, uh, over 300 uh, projects were funded, including since most of you are coming from the University of Alberta, five projects from, from your university. And uh, there is, uh, um, the, 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 the fund is really co-organized um, co on, on both sides, which means that we have two co-presidents, which are here, uh, Ruby Heap uh, and, uh, in Canada and Jacques Samaru from France. So Ruby Heap was uh, at the University of Ottawa and Jacques Samaru was the president of uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure de Lyon. And um, uh, every year, uh, the co-president plus the executive committee are selecting uh, 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 projects, which are about 15 to 20 projects per year. Each project receives $15,000 for a couple of years, uh, but they don't do it by themselves. There is peer evaluation in France and in Canada of these type of projects. 
Um, since uh, beyond these $15,000, the partners also take part in the project in a way that my tax, for instance, uh, sign an agreement with the French Canadian Research Fund so that there would be some funding for students from the two labs to move from one country to the other. Every year, L'Oréal Canada is also uh, providing two to three, uh, uh, I would say, uh, grants to laureates, uh, young women investigators, which are part of, the, of these projects, which are laureates of the French Canada Research Fund for Women in Science. And uh, on the French side, the Ministère d'Enseignement Supérieur et de la Recherche is providing free PhD fellowships every year for free, sub for free uh, projects, which are laureates of the French Canada Research Fund. So in total, you can have not, not only the, the, the grants from the French Canada Research Fund to move uh, from France and, and Canada together and build the, the, the project, the two of you, but you can also receive supplementary funding from my tax and from the Ministry of Research from France. So your contact at the University of Alberta, because once again, most of you uh, are there, is Martin Pellerin. Otherwise, if you have more questions, you can contact Amélie here at the University, at the Embassy, sorry. Uh, she can address uh, your questions uh, regarding the France Canada Research Fund. So this fund was created 20 years ago. It was really primary to connect um, French and Canadian research institutions. And uh, the, there was also a discussion, how can we also promote the discussion between, uh, um, I would say, companies and uh, research laboratories? So a couple of years ago, we uh, started a discussion about that and we created the France Canada Innovation Platform in Innovation, which was uh, started a year ago. Um, and this, uh, this platform is, um, uh, it's a matching platform. Uh, where uh, companies, uh, Canadian companies or French companies based in Canada reach to the platform and they say, we have a specific uh, innovation need that we cannot address internally. Uh, could you please help us to find a laboratory which could address that question? I will take an example. A company which is based in France is developing uh, turbines uh, for the water turbines to, that can make electricity out of, uh, of waves or out of uh, tides. And they developed that in France and they, were, they figure out maybe this could be adapted for uh, communities in the Arctic, but they don't have any uh, idea how they can do research and work on the materials of their system to do that in the Arctic. So they uh, reach out to the platform that will find the right laboratory in Canada who could address that question. And then there will be a matchmaking which will be done. And then the IP will be uh, treated directly between the company and the university. And for that, we uh, are using the database of the French Canadian Research Fund for the laboratory, which are based here in Canada, or uh, the, um, uh, the database of Cognit, which was developed by U15 here. And in France, we have a large database also of laboratories, which uh, can help to develop this type of projects. And uh, I see that the time is running very fast. And um, so I will uh, give you some uh, context that you can have. So the, the the, the scientific service of the, of the French embassy is based primarily here in Ottawa with our uh, science and culture counselor, Brigitte Poussel, myself and Amélie, our assistant. But your primary, uh, your primary contact in Vancouver, uh, in uh, Alberta, sorry, is uh, in Vancouver. It's Chantal Barin. So Chantal is with us right now from France because she's waiting for her visa to uh, come to Canada, but she will be soon there. So Chantal is uh, the science and higher education attaché and Anthony is the assistant there. So you have your, their contact information here. And we also have a small office in Toronto and one in Moncton. So please do not hesitate to contact Chantal for more questions. I'm happy to, uh, to address some questions right now during the sessions. So thanks again to the University of Alberta. Thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, now I leave the stage to um, uh, to Adrien for the next uh, panelist. Uh. Thank you. Thank you, Xavier. And uh, thank you again for the University of Alberta to, uh, for organizing the event today. Uh, let just put my slides up on the screen. Here we go. So hi, everyone. So my name is Adrien Celez. I'm in charge of uh, R&D collaborations between Canada and Wallonia Brussels. So what's Wallonia Brussels? Uh, in a nutshell, so uh, we're Belgian, so uh, from Belgium, and as you may know, uh, Belgium, just like Canada, is a federal state. 
that is uh, our regions, uh, so the French-speaking uh, part of Belgium in the south, so Wallonia, and the capital city Brussels, well, we uh, work on the international stage. So Wallonia Brussels International is actually the agency, agency in charge of uh, research uh, of uh, uh, international relations, sorry, uh, um, abroad. And I'm part of the research and innovation department in charge of really supporting R&D collaborations between uh, universities, clusters, companies from uh, French speaking Belgium with uh, Canada. Uh, we are about 4.6 million people, yeah, uh, French speaking in, in Belgium, which is about the same as the uh, province of Alberta. Not that uh, 4.6 million people speak French in Alberta, but we have roughly the same population. So uh, we set up a science and technology liaison offices uh, network with six target countries. Uh, these countries are already decided um, on a collaborative basis uh, with our universities, research centers, and competitiveness clusters. And Canada has been identified by our uh, researchers as a top priority, which is why I'm, I'm here in Canada at the moment. So as you can see, we've got three offices outside of the EU, in the US, at Tufts University, in Brazil, University of Sao Paulo, and myself, I'm based here in Montreal, so in collaboration with uh, McGill University, the Ecole de Technologie Supérieure, and the Quartier d'Innovation de Montréal. Uh, so I'm uh, with the Belgian consulate here in Montreal, but the difference is that um, as, as, as science and technology liaison officers, we are with uh, partner entities ready to foster R&D collaborations. Our role is uh, basic, basically the same as, uh, as Xavier, as he's mentioned, so I won't go into too much detail, but uh, I'd say my number one priority is really to connect researchers, scientists, entrepreneurs uh, from Canada to um, colleagues in French-speaking uh, Belgium. In a nutshell, our uh, research innovation ecosystem is the following. So we've got about 11,000 researchers spread in our universities and university colleges, which are more or less uh, the same as the colleges of the CEGEP in the provinces of, uh, of Canada. And we really center our um, R&D collaborations around uh, six, uh, six uh, key sectors, sorry, which are defined by our six competitiveness clusters. Uh, these clusters actually gather companies, research institutions, such as um, in universities or um, R&D centers, and these clusters promote joint R&D collaboration projects between companies and the, uh, the universities and the research centers. So we've got six in Wallonia, very active on the international stage and on the European level as well. So we are very focused on pharma and medtech, mechanical engineering, as you can see, aeronautics, aerospace, agri-food, transports and logistics and clean techs. Uh, I don't work 100% on these things, but they're really the core um, parts of our um, R&D collaborations overall. As regards our universities, because yeah, we are with the University of, Alber of Alberta today, um, um, we get six universities in French speaking Belgium. So we get colleagues obviously in Flanders in the north northern part of the country, but I, I only work with uh, to support our, uh, our universities, uh, our six universities here. So we've got uh, six uh, universities, three of them are what we call comprehensive universities, that is they cover all the topics and three of others are specialized. Um, I won't go into all the details, but so you know, so Université Libre de Bruxelles, UC Louvain and Liège universities are all uh, you know, ranked in the top 100 uh, most innovative uh, universities of the Reuters, uh, the last Reuters uh, uh, ranking here in Europe and they are obviously performing quite well on the European level with your Horizon 2020 projects and so our universities as well. Um, as regards R&D collaborations between um, Wallonia, Brussels and, and Canada, well, uh, as Xavier has mentioned, there is uh, the importance of European projects and uh, Horizon 2020, which is the, uh, the framework program supporting R&D collaborations in Europe, but also from Europe to uh, with international uh, partners. And here are the main uh, priorities that were set up by the EU and Canada for Horizon 2020. I won't go into the detail and you'll have access to the slides as well, but so, so you have a, an overview of these priorities. As Xavier has mentioned as well, up until this year, there was no funding or very limited funding for Canadian participants. However, we've had um, a few uh, projects with Canada. So here is uh, a chart of the, uh, of the main uh, topics with Canadian partners 
joining European consortia uh, until April 2019. So for six years of, of the Horizon 2020 program. And as you can see, health is, is quite important on, on that, uh, on that, in that collaboration. Uh, space as well, advanced materials, and smart green and integrated transports. So this was prior to the, uh, the launch of this new co-funding mechanism with Canada. And I zoomed in here, so just to highlight a little bit, the 16 projects that have been funded between Walloon partners, be they universities or companies, and Canadian partners, so before this new funding was available. As, uh, so as Xavier has mentioned a bit, be uh, a bit before, so this new co-funding mechanism, I think, is a, is a big game changer. So um, it was set up this year, and uh, the calls for proposals are now closed, but there were 34 targeted calls for proposals uh, decided between Canada and the EU, all launched this year. Um, the evaluations are now ongoing, and what's, the, the way it works is that um, scientific evaluation is done with scientific experts uh, from the European Commission, so the, the, the standard, I'd say, uh, uh, process to evaluate European uh, Union project proposals. And then for the projects that are validated on the European side, then uh, Ottawa is, is to decide uh, for the funding for the, for the Canadian participants. So the, the funding is kind of $125,000 per year uh, for four years maximum. So we'll know in the next few months um, what's the result of this first uh, co-funding um, call for proposal. I would really, if you are interested in, in getting to know more about Horizon 2020, but especially about Euro Horizon Europe, which will be the new European program for R&D collaborations starting 1st of January 2021. I would encourage you to, um, to, connect, to be connected on the 24th and 25th of, no of November this year uh, with the event organized by uh, EuroAccess North America. You will have speakers from the European Commission who will present in detail this Horizon Europe uh, program and how it works and speakers from the, uh, the Tri-Cancel Cancel Agency to really go into the details as well about this uh, new co-funding mechanism and uh, how it's going to look like for the, for the months and years ahead. For Horizon Europe, uh, we still don't know. Canada may be a partner country, but it's under the discussion and negotiation, so we don't know if that would be the case. But otherwise, uh, we really hope that this new co-funding co -funding mechanism can be, um, can be kept and uh, throughout the first, uh, the first calls for proposals. So we'll have to see, I would really encourage you to, to connect on that day. Another um, important uh, mechanism as well is what's called uh, in the uh, European Union jargon, ERANETs or European Partnerships. I put it here because it's important to know that so far Canada has been involved in, in 15 of these programs. The, um, the difference of this program compared to Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe is that um, Canada or a province uh, such as Quebec, is, they are involved as well, may decide to participate to specific calls for proposals of, of topics of interest. And you as a university or a company, you may actually apply to these programs, but through the, uh, the funding mechanism of your country or the region that is, uh, that is a member. So I've, I've put a little table here. These are the uh, six active networks that exist between sorry, that are ongoing with uh, participation from Canadian entities and Walloon entities as well, so funding agencies, sorry, and you could apply to get funding. So as you can see, four of these networks are actually uh, uh, funders from Quebec, so you would have to, to be based in Quebec or, have, or the, the main proposal, uh, the, the, the main entity that would be paired the proposal that would have to be from Quebec. Uh, so if that's the case for the um, ICT call, so the Shistera one. Uh, but others are funded uh, with um, the federal uh, at the federal level, so such as the uh, ERA HDHS on, on biomarkers. The last one at the bottom of the table is funded by CH CIHR, HR, sorry. So this is an overview of these uh, these calls. You would have to check regularly. I've put all the links here. You can access the, the websites, and uh, and you can have uh, more information on this. Another element uh, I wanted to mention is the um, Alberta, Alberta Europe Technology Collaboration Fund. It only funds um, Alberta and SMEs from Alberta, but universities, research centers are allowed to actually, are, uh, even welcome to, to, to join the, the project, but they would have to get funding from other resources. Uh, but that you could definitely check with the um, German Canadian Center for Innovation and Research that manages the poll with um, and the Alberta government ministry of jobs economy and innovation to see 
uh, how to get maybe co-funding for a university or research center through other programs. Uh, but I wanted to mention this because this is also a venue for R&D collaborations with Walloon companies, but also, you know, um, companies and, and uh, research organizations from other uh, EU countries as well. And I won't go into, into the detail of the Eureka network, but I wanted to mention it as well because Canada is, uh, is part of the network, is uh, an associated member. And here again, uh, you have R&D collaboration opportunities, so it's really market-driven industrial R&D, uh, but with uh, European partners, and Wallonia is part of this Eureka network. And on the Canadian side, uh, only the SMEs can be funded through IRAP, so the, through the uh, NRC, uh, but universities, research centers are welcome on board, on board as well with these projects and could be funding with other sources of, of uh, funding. I've put the link in the, in the slide before, and again, you can then follow up on, on that afterwards. And for um, a quick word for our Quebec uh, colleagues who are following the webinar, um, we've set up uh, a specific bilateral program between uh, the Quebec Research Funds and our FNAS, which is the Research Fund of Bologna Brussels. And uh, we have a bilateral calls for proposals to support R&D uh, research, I mean, fundamental research collaborations between Quebec universities specifically and uh, universities from Wallonia Brussels. We've had 10 projects funded so far in the last three years uh, so through two rounds of calls for proposals and we are anticipating a new call for proposal next year uh, in 2021 uh, depending on the, on, the, um, on the negotiation between the two, uh, the two funds. Sorry. Finally, um, I wanted to touch upon as well uh, researchers' mobility. Uh, we've uh, set up a lot of uh, partnership agreements with Canada, but something I wanted to highlight here is that uh, our national research fund, the FNRS, actually is open to the world. So with the funding, a bit less than 2,000 researchers uh, a year, but all the positions that are actually from, uh, that, uh, that are funded by uh, the FNRS are open to worldwide scientists, scientists from all around the world, and um, so. We, be it at the doctoral level, at the postdoc level, or if you want to be a permanent, uh, a permanent researcher, uh, you can apply as a Canadian, um, as a Canadian uh, researcher or as an international researcher based in Canada. You can apply to all these pro programs. I've put all, these, all the links here as well with all the calendars and, uh, and the different uh, deadlines to, to apply to these uh, positions. Another program that is uh, set up by our Ministry of Research is the Beware Fellowship Program, which is co-funded by the European Commission as well. And what's interesting in that program is uh, the possibility, the, it really um, encourages you to spend 50% of your time uh, with a Walloon company uh, and 50% of your time with the um, university or the uh, academic institution that would welcome you here in Wallonia for a research contract of up to three years. So it's, it's the second version of this uh, program. Uh, it ran from 2015 to 2018 before with uh, a bit less than 10 Canadian researchers involved in the, in the program and uh, but very successful. And the next deadline is gonna be in April 2021 to actually apply to this uh, position. So you can find the information on the um, program hyperlink that I put here on the, on the slide or on your access as well, it's available. So we got 75 positions to be uh, available, uh, available actually over the next three years. Um, something Xavier mentioned as well. So just as France, we have um, uh, a bilateral program with MyTax. So ready to support more short-term research uh, projects, both for Canadian researchers willing to come to Wallonia, Brussels uh, for a short, uh, short uh, stay up to 24 weeks, and also for uh, Belgian researchers wishing to come to Canada. Uh, for 12 to 24 weeks. Uh, it's an open-ended application pro process on the, on the Canadian to Wallonia Brussels side. Uh, but, uh, you know, as due to the current, current uh, COVID situation, the, the call for proposal is, is still open. And uh, as a researcher, you, you apply. And if you're actually selected, you would have up to one year to actually fulfill uh, the, the, the project and come to Wallonia Brussels, because we are well aware of that. At the moment, mobility is either not possible or seriously hindered, obviously, in, in both ways. Um, and finally, um, our own researchers' mobility scheme here at Wallonia Brussels International, so at our ministry, 
we have schemes both ways, but I wanted to highlight here the, uh, the, the scheme to actually to come do uh, undertake research projects in, uh, in Belgium. It's called Wallonia Brussels Inn, so I've put the link here as well. It's valid for short or long-term stays as well. And uh, we grant about 20 uh, researchers mobility grants per year. And last year, India and France were the most represented, but uh, now it's up to you to, to make sure that Canada is in, in the top, and, um, in the top uh, ranking as well for researchers coming to, to Belgium, hopefully. So here it is, here are my uh, contact details. So not as many details as for Xavier, but you know, um, any questions on these programs, um, any, any specific interest you'd like to discuss in, in person, um, I'm here, I'm here for that, and I'm, I'll be happy to, to answer you. So thank you for your attention. And uh, again, don't hesitate to get in touch by email or by phone. Thank you. So I don't know if there were specific questions. I didn't have time to get a look, take a look at the Q and R. Um, I think we have uh, one. Um, you can read it, uh, and it's uh, the question related to COVID nineteen. Do you think that uh, the situation will affect, like, the focus of collaboration uh, would be more focused around the health sciences? Uh, uh, due to the fact that this is like super important at the moment, or do you expect any specific funds uh, related uh, to this uh, topic allocated for partnerships? Uh, Xavier, you want to start, or shall I go? Okay, I can I can start. So first, um, of course, it's a, pri uh, a research priority for most countries at the moment, which means that there might be some supplementary funding for uh, this type of questions. Uh, it is the case in France, as it is here in Canada. Uh, I could just give an example: the French Canada, the French Canada Research Fund uh, will select uh, uh, maybe uh, I mean has a priority on this to topic for next year. It might not be on the health science, but more on the uh, uh, on on the surrounding of uh, of the pandemic. For for example, uh, the history uh, historical perspective or the impact on the sociology on the, on the societies of this type of pandemic because uh, uh, health uh, health projects are extremely expensive. But uh, I think it's important to mention that uh, most countries, they're also thinking about the after, which means that if they, uh, just like Canada, the, 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 uh, um, the Canada, Innovation Canada uh, declare in, in July that they, they have uh, funded a lot of uh, large uh, infrastructure in Canada in all types of subjects, not only in health science. It's the same everywhere. If, if we start to work only on health science, then what about everything else. So there will be, uh, there will be uh, maybe some more priorities, some more money which will be injected in the health science. I would say in one health, which means to, uh, to measure the impact on, uh, of, uh, of animal health and human health and the connections between the two. But that should not be the only one. And I'm sure that most countries are thinking that way. I don't know about uh, Belgium, as we are. Yes, it's exactly the same. We do have additional, obviously, funding related to COVID, uh, you know, uh, vaccine research and, and, and treatments and also you know, all the consequences uh, for, the, for the population. So there is additional funding, but all, I know our governments and uh, having spoken quite a lot with the, uh, the Quebec governments as well, the idea is not to fund and to channel all, all, the, uh, all the funding only to COVID-19 response, but to really uh, make sure that we, we keep we do support research in all the, all the fields. Uh, you can say another three questions and uh, I, I will uh, leave it up to you to decide who, who respond what. Yes. I think there is one for Xavier. Yeah, I see there is a question on the most frequent program. Sorry, Adria. Yeah. Um, so, the, the question is, uh, is it focused more on, on early career researcher? Uh, so we accept uh, we we accept applications from for from anyone, but uh, it is true that we would like to uh, emphasize new collaborations, which means that uh, early career researchers, which are uh, either on tenure track or uh, recently tenured here in Canada, we have the priority. 
which means that when we uh, when we are uh, grading the applications, we add a couple of po more points for uh, younger career applicants because we know that these are the uh, faculty who need the most start new collaboration because they need to they they need to build a network of collaborators, and so that's the opportunity to do it. So on the question on um, science and technology research, yes, I mean we um, we do have specific we, we do have funding opportunities for social, social science research. Sorry, um, I did highlight our key sectors so really around the competitiveness clusters here in in Bologna. But for instance, for the Quebec Bologna specific bilateral funding, uh, it has to be interdisciplinary research. So social science and humanities are key parts of all of the ten funded projects at the moment. Uh, obviously, for other programs such as Eureka, uh, it, it's more driven towards SMEs, so it's more our IND with an industrial component. But I mentioned a few examples of um, projects between uh, Canada and Wallonia through the Horizon 2020 uh, program, and four of these uh, 16, I think, are on so social science. So, uh, so, and so, so that's to be noticed as well. As far as uh, researchers' mobility is concerned, um, same here and for Wallonia Brussels. Um, every year we make sure that there is a strong part of the social science project that are funded. So it's not solely driven around our six competitiveness clusters on our side, but we make sure that social science gets uh, gets its fair share of the of the project uh, funded. Yeah, it's the same here. When I look at the uh, the different programs, so is it? I'm presenting earlier whether they are the most reclam program or the france canada research fund both uh, i would say hard science and uh, and uh, social sciences and the humanities are uh, are supported so there is it really covers all ranges of uh, of science whether they are uh, science and technology uh, or uh, social and uh, social sciences and humanities I've seen one question as well on um, is existing other research support by researchers in France, Belgium and in Canada respectively a factor in a proposal and is it okay to have overlap uh, with um, other grants? Uh, well, as regards the factor question, yes, I mean, it's if there are already um, ongoing collaborations, I think it's definitely a plus. And um, if you can mention that, you know, your institutions are already in touch working on specific projects and it shows that you have, uh, there is history in the collaborations. That's not to say that, you know, if not, you haven't worked together before, you won't, won't get funded. Obviously not, but it's always a plus, I, I think, if there, are, there is history of, of partnerships. Um, is it okay to have overlap with other grants? I think that depends on the funding programs you're applying to. I know, for instance, for the uh, Researchers Mobility Program, between uh, my tax and, and us, uh, we actually, um, so it's $6,000 for up to 24 weeks uh, stay. We do encourage and we do support the possibility to have, to have co-funding co mechanism with other uh, funding sources. So I'd say that depends on the program. Do check always on the, uh, in the criteria. And uh, on our side, uh, I would say that the French Canada Research Fund is its new collaboration, so it's uh, it's part of the criteria uh, to uh, to be a laureate uh, is that you need to, to start a new collaboration. It's uh, it's relatively similar with the Molo Strickland program, although the evaluation is on uh, in house, so it's a bit different. However, we, we would like to promote new uh, new partnerships. Uh, so it's uh, it's better if the two teams already had discussions, but uh, if they already published together, it's a bit more tricky. Uh, we really would like to build new bridges between the two uh, t uh, the two laboratories on both sides. I mean, so that's uh, that's the main point. Uh, also, if uh, if there are um, uh, if a, a Quebec team applies to the French Canada Research Fund, they cannot have also a grant from the similar programs which exist between Quebec and France, which are, for instance, the Champlain. Uh, so it's not possible to have funds from both programs. And uh, uh, for other type of programs which are larger, because these are all seeds program, then I guess it really depends on the uh, funding scheme. Uh, Xavier, Adrian, I, I think our time is uh, 
uh, almost over. So I, I suggest if you can maybe uh, choose another one, two questions to answer, and then we will encourage people to contact you directly because you left your contact information and uh, then we will uh, have to, to wrap up for today. Okay, um, Xavier, if you don't mind, I'll just take one of the questions on the specific streams uh, to come to Wallonia Brussels for uh, researchers' mobility. Uh, mm -hmm. Regarding sabbatical stay, um, I've seen the question. I don't have the answer, actually. Um, I'm not sure about the specific funding uh, for sabbatical stays, but I will uh, double check. Uh, I, I took your name, put your name down. Uh, you can drop me a line as well to make sure I have your email contact and I get back to you, but uh, I will double check on this. And uh, see, there is another question about the France Canada Research Fund. Um, indeed, uh, having a publication is uh, might be um, one of the reasons why the uh, why your project might not be eligible for for this uh, type of funding. Uh, I mean, that's a requirement. If that's a new collaboration, so having published together uh, is uh, make makes it not eligible for the France Canada Research Fund. Okay, I, I think that uh, it was very uh, fruitful discussion and uh, obviously we cannot cover everything within a very short period of time, but uh, I uh, would like to say thank you for your presentations, for your time, and uh, I would like to thank everyone who joined us today. And um, as it was mentioned before, please don't hesitate to contact our speakers. They will be uh, happy to provide you um, any additional uh, clarifications and uh, answer your questions. Thank you for very much uh, uh, once again and uh, take care. Thanks, Bye. Alex. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Alex. Thank you all. Bye.